Let's talk about zines. My name is Dana, and I love creating, collecting, reading, and discussing zines. And this is Zine Reviews. Today I'll be sharing five great zines from my collection. They all relate in some form or fashion to music, and I hope this list inspires you to pick up a new zine or download an album. Let's get started. Shotgun Seamstress by Osa Ato is a fanzine written by, for, and about black punks. Issue number seven, Flyer Art, recounts Osa's experiences booking all ages DIY shows in New Orleans under the moniker No More Fiction. She also created Skillshare events, where women, queers, and people of color could learn to play drums, set up PA systems, and DJ, as well as NOLA's Not Enough Fest, where brand new all-girl, mixed-gender, and femme-fronted bands made up the bill. Amongst the cut-and-paste collaged flyers from some of the more memorable gigs she's booked are the stories behind each show. Osa booked a bunch of great bands, Everyone from Inaco, back when they were called Fleabag, to Kaya Wilson from Team Dresh, and even her own bands, Firebrand and Heat Rash. makes me wish I could have gone to a No More Fiction show. You can tell that Osa has a true passion for opening punk music up to everyone and building a more inclusive scene. Speaking of building a more inclusive punk scene, aspiring musicians should check out Band Basics by Kay Stanley and Erica Fries. In this ultra-informative and thorough zine, Kay and Erica lay out the basics of playing music, booking shows, and recording. The zine draws on their years of experience playing in and managing bands. Kay runs Bristol's Specialist Subject Records, Erica plays in the bands Reviver and Somnia, and together they make up two-fifths of the band Cosmet. In their own words, Band Basics aims to demystify some of the cultural etiquette around playing shows, so more people can become a part of the scene and make it their own. They cover it all, from gear to goals to gigs, and answer some of the questions I've always had about live music but have been too intimidated to ask. One of my favorite things about this scene is how Kay and Erica emphasize community and communication as the key ingredients to creating a successful band. Our next scene is a classic, everyone's favorite bi-monthly nonprofit punk fanzine, Razor Cake. Razor Cake has been around for what feels like forever, and each issue is full of interviews, op-eds, comics, and reviews from the bands, zinesters, thinkers, and scene makers who keep inventing and reinventing DIY punk and independent music. The latest issue, number 121, Features interviews with Warren Women's Shauna Potter, thrash drummer Max Ward, comic creator Janelle Hessick, and Bim Thomas of The Bass Holes, This Moment in Black History, and Obnox. Turn to any page in any issue of Razor Cake and you're guaranteed to discover a new to your ears band that you've just got to check out. The record reviews section alone is, well, it's a treasure trove. And this is maybe the only magazine in existence where the ads are just as fun to read as the features. Vinyl Dyke releases music and zines straight out of Berlin's underground scene. Their eponymous fanzine has interviews and features with the likes of Big Joni, Carrie Brownstein, and Jess Corum, as well as personal stories of being a queer feminist punk. And it's that Persian spirit that really makes Vinyl Dyke stand out. The Gender Rockstar essay in issue one is still one of my favorite pieces of music writing ever, but today I want to feature their hashtag B-side mini issue. 
Following the Breeders, the Kelly Deal Trilogy. This scene recounts Evelyn's experience following the Breeders on a three-show run of their 2018 All Nerve UK tour and her mission to get the band to play their cover of Archangel's Thunderbird. Because of the pandemic, I haven't been to a concert in over a year. So reading the zine made my heart hurt in the best way possible. I miss live music so much. The zine makes me want to get in the pit and feel the music. Last, but certainly not least, is True Love, a girl group fanzine by Annie Harrigan, which I picked up back in 2015 at the first annual Kansas City Zine Con. This tribute to the ladies and songs of the Du Lang era of music features Annie's playful illustrations of girl groups cut and paste collaged amongst doodles of flowers and stars. True Love is a great example of how a zine doesn't need to be text heavy to be informative. It introduced me to a lot of great groups I had never heard before. The Caravelles, the Flirtations, and the Sweethearts of Rhythm. The Sweethearts were a 17-piece interracial all-women swing group who used their music to push against racial and gender discrimination. They won competitions worldwide and were a radio broadcast favorite in the 1940s. And to think, I would have never had the chance to listen to them if it weren't for true love. That's the power of music zines. They help you discover bands, albums, or songs that you would have never stumbled upon on your own. Fanzines are like a mixtape or a playlist, but full of stories and pictures that help illuminate the songs. They're a way of building a music community. And while my list was pretty heavy on punk, because that's what I listen to, there are fanzines for all sorts of different genres of music. I'd love to know what zines you're reading and what artists you're listening to. Share your suggestions in the comments. I've also left a list of distros and other resources in the description, so you can check out these zines and form your own opinion. If you do pick one up, let me know how you like it. Till next time, see you later, zinesters.